Alrighty, hello, good morning, afternoon, or whatever it may happen to be in your neck of the woods, and welcome to a new Tactics Ogre Challenge here. Uh, so this is the one I've been testing for a couple of months here, and I'm a huge fan of roguelikes. Uh, like, I, I've been saying for quite a while that the uh, Tactics Ogre remake feels like something that was made uh, to potentially have a permadeath mode in it, have a roguelike mode of some sort in it, and so that's more or less kind of what this boils down to. So. You've got two different flavors for this one. Uh, this, this actually works for both vanilla and the One Vision mod. So if you're doing this vanilla, first of all, you're going to be running it solo. Uh, if you're doing this for One Vision, you are going to have the option of five units. However, you don't exactly have full say over what those units are. Now, I personally don't like to make challenges too complicated, and oh dear goodness, this uh, yeah, this particular spawn is screwed beyond screwed, actually. Um, so, there's a lot of things to consider for this particular run, but let, let's get on with it here. So, for one thing, you can't use any stores. Um, it's pretty simple. Any function of the store whatsoever, you cannot use. So this means that you can't buy anything, you can't sell anything, you can't craft anything, you can't recruit generics. Um, you may think, hey, you know, generics are pretty, pretty uh, lame compared to some of the stuff you can find in the story. Yes, until you need those generics. Um, you're going to find yourself wishing you had some generics by the end of this run. So, the deal is, you can't actually save. Um, you can't save unless the game asks you to. And if you take a loss or death at any point during the run, you have to go back to your previous save point and use the cheats that will be attached in this particular uh, uh, in this uh, video here uh, to give yourself minus one life. So the idea is, you functionally have three lives at the start of the game, um, and you have to find a way to get through the entire game uh, Without essentially without saving for a large chunk of it, and or potentially uh, potentially get through say like the entirety of the Palace of the Dead without actually saving any time in between. Um, if you happen to take three losses uh, without finding an elixir along the way, well that's the end of your run. So very similar to uh, if you played Tome or something like that. Sure, you have the option to have lives, but unless you find a way to uh, to get more of them, you're going to be in for a hard time. Now might be thinking, okay, in vanilla you can get pretty overpowered, you know, you can become an absolute monster among men here, and yes, you absolutely can, however, a big factor to that is the fact that you're able to usually get a hold of things in stores. You're usually able to go and buy things like, uh, you know, like the heal spells, or uh, having some ability to speed yourself up, or some way to remove debuffs. Because here's the thing, a lot of those, a lot of those are very difficult to find out in the field, like for example, healing consumables. For about the first three chapters, as far as the story goes, you're going to typically have maybe two plus two mend leaves, maybe like ten regular mend leaves, and maybe one plus three if you're, you know, if you happen to have everything going your way. Aside from that, you have to find different ways to get them, and as in a little bit of an odd note, um, random battles don't tend to have a whole lot of those lying around. Um, which is actually something that's become more and more obvious as uh, as attempts on this particular run have gone on. So, I will say, having tested it on both versions, it is definitely doable, but it's very, very difficult. So, bear in mind that this run will, will essentially demand going into a lot of weirder mechanics that you may not necessarily use. Uh, for example, this, this is the first run I have ever seen that there's a justifiable reason to be using the resist skills. Um, yeah. Uh, as in those things, they give you a 5% resistance to a debuff that are terrifyingly unreliable. Um, so yes, I, this, is a, this is the first time I've actually found myself wanting to use those for any reason. Um, but uh, but yeah, you'll generally be going and uh, exploring a whole lot of different weapon types, a whole bunch of different item loadouts. You'll usually be trying to find really obscure ways to solve different problems that you run into on different maps. It generally takes a lot of uh, game knowledge to be able to get through this kind of challenge, and I, I think that makes it pretty dang fun. Now, I might be saying, why didn't, why are you allowed five people on the one vision mod? Well, here's the thing. In, in the vanilla game, you can make yourself absolutely busted in terms of stats. Like, you'll never get to the point where you're actually invincible. Uh, even maxed out stats, maxed out skills with the best items in the game, and a fire crest, you're still... You're still vulnerable. It's surprisingly vulnerable. To, uh, uh, on top of that, um, so for example, uh, for example, uh, say you have all of the above somehow, you somehow manage to get a hold of all of those items. Golems will still be able to punch you for a solid hundred plus in many cases. 
Um, dragons will still be able to hit with 100% accuracy for those same types of damage. Like, there's a lot of different things that different units can do. And especially archers never stop being a threat. Melee units will will usually still be able to do some kind of damage to you. Um, it's really only casters that stop doing direct damage. And actually, that's... Like, up until this run, I never realized how many overbattle references there were in this game. Which seems like a really weird thing to mention. Also, by the way, you never notice how fast archers are in this until they suddenly start double-turning you. Um, but, uh, but for example, have you ever realized that, kind of past the first couple chapters in the game, casters, generally speaking, aside from the really specialized ones, they stop relying on doing direct damage. But they're always used for debuffs. And what are the most accurate debuffs? The same kind of ones you always saw in OB. So, really, um, really like that one. It's a little bit of an odd detail, but yeah, in many cases, you're just running around with pretty piecemeal equipment, just trying to make something work. Um, like right here, I'm actually switching over back over to, to shield and sword simply because, well, while I have an okay spear on this guy, it's not going to be something that I want to continue trying to pull off. Uh, so, something to bear in mind, um, just kind of in terms of background mechanics, especially when playing through the vanilla version, is that one-handed weapons scale a lot better than two-handed ones. Um, and in most cases, really, it's, it's just lighter weight that's the, the biggest benefit for the two-handed versions. Sure, you're going to get a little bit of extra damage in some cases, but in most, uh, for most of the time, you're usually only getting a bit of a better speed bonus. Usually the kind of, uh, while it's not official, the kind of unofficial damage threshold you get off the shield is going to hold up a lot better for most situations. Um, but yeah, so that being said, that, that all being said, um... I personally find this to be a really fun run. Like I said, the cheats are going to be included for all of this stuff. It definitely adds a lot of tension to it while you're trying to figure out new ways to basically overcome RNG, because there's obviously going to be a lot of it. Um, like, do you, for example, in this kind of situation, sure, there's one archer that's going to be doing consistent damage, but like, do you do you assume that your odds of going and dodging all the melee stuff is going to be better than you know than your odds of trying to parry all the melee attacks and try to find a way to avoid that archer there, or do you assume that the, the uh, wizard guy in the back is going to have some petrify on him or something like that? Um, every one of them is going to have something. You'll generally notice a lot more details about the game, you know, little design stuff that you may not have noticed. So that's usually what I like doing challenge runs for, you know, appreciate all the little stuff. Um, in this particular case, um, I will say it's, it's possible, but definitely near impossible. So. If, uh, if and when a normal schedule starts existing down the road, I plan to start running this challenge for both versions, just kind of alternating between the two. Um, but in, until then, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully you guys will uh, will give this one a shot. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it all goes. Um, I decided to call it the Stubborn Wretch Challenge because there's one particular lion um, out of resin and uh, vice early on. Uh, they have a little uh, conversation back and forth, and in most cases, uh, you don't actually see that line come up. Actually, I had to specifically go and create that situation from this run in order to be able to uh, to get the uh, thumbnail for this picture, because none of the runs that I've done, nor any of the uh, ones that I went and watched other people do, actually had that line come up, which I was kind of surprised that it never happened. I, I am constantly quoting that weird one. And, and yeah, so, so this is the Stubborn Wretch Challenge, because the game's constantly asking, what does it take to kill you in this situation? So there we go, we picked up a trident that suddenly makes uh, going back to spears a bit more viable. Um, and yeah, while this particular one's on one vision, I will say it, it does, in some ways, um, it plays a bit like an MMO uh, when you're playing it on vanilla. Um, in one vision where you've got five people, your healing abilities are a lot more limited. You can't really use uh, scrolls or anything else inside of, uh, inside of battles. So that's why I allowed for five people. Um, I tried doing a version with three earlier on, and while it was possible, it still was... You really couldn't get to that point of completely overcoming RNG with enough strategy, so I figured five was a bit more sensible. Not to mention it kind of harkens back a little bit to those uh, five-man challenge runs that uh, you'd see in uh, TEO back in the day. So, you know, there's that. Um, I think that more or less covers everything here. Um, I mean... Yeah, I really can't think of, it, of anything else there is to cover. So if you have any questions or you'd like any clarifications on any rules, uh, feel free to go ahead and ask in the comments there, and I will answer. Um, no questions are done since this is kind of a uh, kind of a custom rule set, as it were. Um, and yeah, looking forward to hearing the horror stories. Take care, y'all. Stay safe.